Hello and welcome back to another tutorial series. This is going to be DevOps. So here we're going to focus on DevOps in this series. This is going to be a, a generic type of series where I'll keep dropping in different tutorials based around DevOps. So we're going to start off by talking about what DevOps is or what it could be. And then I'll give you a brief introduction to CICD and then talk about the DevOps pipeline. And that's then going to take us into the next tutorial where I'm going to be talking about uh, specific software. And then we'll start then in the following tutorial, start to actually utilize some software and get going. So that's a general roadmap for the next couple of tutorials in this series. So I guess we need to answer what is DevOps? So the chances are that if I were to ask this question to a number of industry developers, we would get a range of different answers. That's partly due to the fact that this type of role, like many other roles in the development realm, have evolved over time and they do encompass different disciplines. So just thinking about this as a job, if you were to type in DevOps into Google to search for job roles, it might blur the lines also of distinguishing the definition of what DevOps is. So let's think of DevOps as a solution. The problem being how to collaboratively develop, test, deploy, secure, and easily scale a service whilst ensuring smooth integration and delivery of software. So with that in mind, we could say, well, DevOps is the practice of operations and development engineers participating together in the entire service lifecycle, from design through to the development process into production support. So that maybe kind of muddied the waters a little bit there. So maybe also we can summarize and say, well, DevOps is a software development practice. It's a software development lifecycle. Um, it's the practice of operations and development working together to ensure smooth integration and delivery of a piece of software. So we're talking about building, developing, testing, deploying a piece of software, but ultimately taking any manual process and automating it. So with DevOps, we're in the business of automating as much of this process of building and deploying an application as we can. So the benefits of kind of automating some of this process um, that takes place to ultimately deploy a piece of software is deployment rates are increased. So the more we can automate, it means potentially the quicker and faster we can deploy um, any updates to this software. So therefore the throughput increases, we get this idea of ease of scalability, flexibility, and reliability. These are all the characteristics that one might connect to DevOps. So pretty much what I've said so far is I was trying to draw you towards this idea that DevOps is a collaborative, sometimes called a culture, with a set of practices, ideas, tools, and technologies and processes that ultimately streamlines the product development process. I've emphasized the fact that this is a is the emphasis here on DevOps is about effective communication. It's about integration and better collaboration among, like I suggested, operations and development teams. The ultimate goal of DevOps of course, is to deliver quality products. So why I said that on this slide is because sometimes there's a little bit of confusion between DevOps and CICD. If you take a look around the internet, there's questions, for example, what's better, CICD or DevOps? So there's definitely some confusion here in the community about what the difference is between DevOps and CICD. So let's start off by saying CI continuous integration and CD continuous delivery or sometimes continuous deployment. Now, why I mentioned those two points there is because there are some significant differences between continuous delivery and continuous deployment. But let's just go back to CICD. So let's think of CICD as a collection of operating principles and practices, which ultimately will help us develop um, and deliver 
frequent code changes in a really reliable way. So if you haven't thought about this, obviously developing a piece of software, that's okay. We deploy it. And of course, most software will then evolve over time. They will keep getting updated. So we need a way of doing that. And here again, we're talking about trying to continuously integrate, continuously develop and deploy a piece of software. And we want to try and do that in the most reliable way possible. So here steps in CICD, which I said is a collection of operating principles and practices that's going to help us deliver that software. So just before we move on to the next slide, I just wanted to give you a brief kind of general differentiation here between continuous delivery and continuous development. So think of continuous development as a, a software release process that uses automation or automated testing to validate if changes to a code base are correct and stable, for example, for immediate autonomous deployment to the production environment. So here with continuous development, think um, the fact that you could write some code straight away, press a button, and then it could automatically be tested and deployed straight away. In comparison to continuous delivery, whereby we may, may have time frames, so every week we're going to deploy X, Y, and Z, and it's just a, a slightly different process. Everything doesn't get automated straight away. There might be a point in time which then you then deploy. So let's just think of it that way. So continuous delivery is more of a structured deployment process every week, every month, whereas continuous development is about deploying automatically um, autonom autonomously to the production environment. So let's think of a really kind of basic set of, or a life cycle of an application. We build it or design it, we build it, develop it, we test it, maybe there's some quality assurance, user acceptance testing, and then we deploy. Okay, so that is just a, a generalized development life cycle of an application. So what we're trying to do here with CICD is automate as much as this as possible. And in addition to that, that automation then becomes, or we can start calling this a pipeline. So this is the pipeline that we want to automate. Now, of course, we can't automate the actual developer writing code, but once they've deployed that code or um, pushed that code up, um, then that can automatically be tested and so on and deployed potentially through this um, pipeline that we're going to build. So keep that in your mind for now, a pipeline. So we're going to be building a pipeline. This is going to be a process, a step-by-step -step type of process, which is going to build up, be built of other software where we can, like I said, literally create a piece of software, type it all out, upload it or push it to wherever we're, whatever we're using. And then that will just automatically then be deployed on our server. So the question now is, well, how do I build a pipeline? How would I go about this process? So imagine you want to now build some software and you want to build this pipeline and follow these CICD practices. So what would you need first? So first up, what you could use is a CICD framework. This is, think of this as the, the glue that's going to stick everything together. There's a common word that's used, orchestrate. So these type of softwares here are going to orchestrate um, the task of putting all these pieces of software together, which make up our life cycle and then perform the actions then of testing and then deploying our application. So we're going to be looking at Jenkins in this series and in the next couple of series, our next couple of tutorials, we'll have actually a look at installing and then we'll start using it to actually develop a um, a pipeline for a Django application. So we can go from deploying, testing, sorry, testing um, and deploying an application. So like I said, we're going to meet, need many uh, softwares to actually do this or services to actually do this. So Jenkins or Travis, for example, and there are many more, this is going to be the, um, the tool that we're going to use to talk to many of these different services and tools to orchestrate um, this 
uh, life cycle that we're building for our application. So just to establish that, so the CI CD framework, for example, Jenkins, that's like I said, gonna, is gonna orchestrate these multiple services to ge generate or build, for example, this pipeline here of developing, obviously we develop the app, we then push that code, it then gets tested automatically and deployed automatically. So this is our pipeline. This pipeline is gonna made up, be made up of multiple softwares and services and our CI CD framework in this case, for example, Travis or Jenkins is going to manage that for us. So for example, the second item in our pipeline, so we've got our CI CD framework. Now we're gonna need some other softwares and services. So the first one might be, for example, source control. So you're probably all too familiar with, for example, Git or GitHub, for example. That is a, a source control management system, for example. So source, we think of code. So that's going to provide us the tools to collaboratively merge control, uh, check out and change any conflicting code. And it's going to provide us versioning, for example, to manage our code. So this is maybe one block or one section of our pipeline that we're going to establish and utilize. So a second part of our pipeline might be, for example, build automation. So this is the process of building source code into binary code, uh, running automated tests, for example. And of course, this is all program language uh, dependent uh, programs, for example, programming languages like JavaScript or PHP, they obviously don't need to be compiled. So this isn't necessarily a process that every pipeline will have, but just to give you a general flavor of the type of actions and process you might have in your pipeline, we have build automation. So as you might imagine, there's plenty of different software out there for build automation, depending on what program language you're using. So an example here is this uh, Yocto. Um, this is uh, just outlining the um, development process for this piece of software, which is a fairly interesting read if you wanted to do that. But this is just one example of build automation. Okay, so another factor of build automation that you might include in your pipeline, for example, a server. So we're using Django, for example, so Gunnyhorn, for example. If you're using a JS, you might have a node server. So this is something that you might include in your pipeline and automate all the different scripts and settings that you want to include. This is also maybe containerizing your application at this point, for example. So this just gives you another flavor of some of the different steps or of this pipeline. Now core to this pipeline will be code testing. And again, there's plenty of different automation software available for this. Um, we can sometimes think of code testing in two steps, maybe code testing frameworks and code quality review tools. So for example, coverage, for example. So again, another example of a stage in this pipeline. So ultimately, we may have in our pipeline source control, build automation, server platform containers, and code testing. So that will all be hooked up and orchestrated by our CICD framework, whether that be Travis or Jenkins, for example. So there are plenty more we could talk about in the pipeline. I just wanted to give you a brief overview. This is all heading towards this series rather than trying to give you a, a massive overview on what's happening here. But hopefully you get the sentiment and the underpinning knowledge that I'm trying to convey here. So DevOps CI CD pipeline we're going to be now moving across in the next tutorial, talking about Jenkins, giving you a brief introduction, and then starting then to move into actually utilizing Jenkins, bringing in Django and some other software and services, and building our pipeline to automate the process of testing and deploying our application.